Hello, and welcome back to Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition. Where today, we're gonna go to at least one more dungeon. That place to the left isn't one. Also, uh, between episodes, you missed a little scene like this where we met up with the Alphataria guys again, and they were like, hey, there's this guy called the Black Knight who's trying to become better at weapons. Hello there. So, yeah, just setting up a future character. So, I guess... Shula here... isn't allowed to have full voicing? You've come a long way. Why, isn't it a fine day today? I hope your journey is as bright and clear as the sky is now. That'd be nice. But crops don't grow without rain. Oh, all right then. I hope your journey has some rain too. Yeah, I like rain, so that's fine. Hopefully you'll grow through your travels and end up stronger than when you started. May that be true for both of our caravans. Yeah, that would be very nice. Also, you're really far from home. Those people are from the fields of Foom. Yeah, that spot to the left is not a dungeon, and it's also not a place we can really do anything with right now. And we need water. I grabbed the wrong element. Thankfully, it's easy enough to just swap it here. Um, uh, yeah, that. Yep. Whoops. Uh... Still learning how everything works again in this version. So you may notice that spot to the right that the arrow is currently conveniently pointing to. Looks a little out of place. That's going to be a dungeon later. Alright, time to go through this miasma stream. And we get to see what is, in my opinion, one of the coolest visuals that was ever on the GameCube. Like, you walk and you walk and then boom. Like, when it was on the GameCube, it had very impressive visuals for the time. Just having that shield pop up and become more solid. It looked really cool is what I'm trying to say. All right, time to go to the Mushroom Forest. Or I guess it's time for another scene. Eventually these will become less common. Oh, these fellas. Hi, Hello. Darius and Anna Cole. Well, how are things going? They're going fine. Got one drop. Well, you've been busy, haven't you? It's about time we got serious, too. Wait, one drop is being busy? Hmm, yeah. We'll get moving tomorrow. Uh, if you don't get moving now, you're going to run out of time. And this is literally a life and death thing. It's not it's not a term paper or any kind of project. It's literally the life and death of your village. Right. Well, see you around. Farewell. Hana, you need to stop interrupting Dayus.
You know what? I could probably check the diary for that interaction I had with the Alphateria folks. I mean, it won't repeat everything they said word for word, but... Eh, whatever. We'll do it later. We got the mushroom forest to go to. I love the music here. You're probably going to be very tired of hearing that by the end of this series, if you aren't already. This game's music almost makes it forgivable that the loads are so long. When I was a child, I once asked my mother, where did I come from? She answered, why, we all sprouted from the mushroom forest, of course. Nightmares soon haunted my sleep. I dreamt that I was lost among the toadstools. I awoke in tears but felt the warmth of my mother's embrace as she comforted me. It is something I still remember to this day. All right, you get... Okay, there it is. Oh, I'm sorry, it's the fungi forest, not the mushroom forest. Forgive me. Okay, I gotta pick up all the money I find. That is a bit of an unfortunate bonus thing because, whoops. Because A, you're not guaranteed money drops, and B, I forget whether it's about how many gill you pick up in total or how many gill drops you pick up. It's definitely one of them. And that's some cure magicite already. That is excellent. And over to the left there's a thing. Hey, that one I actually managed to... Without mashing, I managed to do the three-hit combo. Yay! I've figured it out. Kind of. A little bit. And down here we got some enemy... Okay, for those, we are going to want to get rid of rays here. That's what we want. We want gravity. Because Arimans are flying creatures. You can't really do a whole lot of damage to them while they fly. But get them on the ground, and suddenly you can do a lot more. And there's a defense artifact. But yeah, um... I think it's, you're limited to doing, like, one damage with physical attacks on flying things. But then you use gravity and physical attacks affect them just fine. Not to mention gravity, I think, cuts their HP in half to begin with, because that's just an effect of gravity. Crystal balls, I believe, are used in some crafting recipe things. Though the crafting in this game is, I guess, Monster Hunter style in that you have NPCs do it for you. You just give them ingredients. And we got another Ariman. And unlike the giant crab, it only casts Thunder instead of Thundara. And down it goes. Hmm. 
magic. I believe this is where we can get another of the high priority artifacts. So I might want to hold off on collecting a fourth. If that's even a thing that matters, I don't even remember. It might be that you can only have four drop to begin with. And I'll kill this Ariman without gravity just to show how much more it takes. Oh, I guess it doesn't really take much more. I must have been misremembering. I didn't check what color that artifact was. It says it's a green beret, so I'm assuming it's a defense artifact. Which would make it light blue. Well, that thing sure didn't put up a fight. I'm beginning to think I should have gone on the upper path instead of here. So that fruit seed we can send home. And it'll provide some benefits. Yep, definitely should have taken the other path. So let's go back. Oh yes. So, we got a pendant. Those increase your number of hearts. There are four of them to get in the game. And that's our first one. And, oh boy, are we keeping it. Having more hearts is very, very good. Especially that first one, because that is a 25% increase in our total health. <laughs> But I would say that the pendants are the third priority among artifacts. With pockets being second priority. And then stat boosts being everything after third. And once we find something that's first priority, I'll explain what and why. But I don't think we'll find one for another few dungeons. They're kind of powerful. Oh, look at that little guy. And suddenly, not little guy. Okay, so we're actually going to want to get rid of gravity. No, stop. And we're probably going to want clear. Because this is a Malboro in a Final Fantasy game. Okay, getting rid of these guys. hanging in there. Your uh, Moogle can sometimes cast Cure on you. It's nice. Oh, that was... Is that like slow ga or something? It affected the whole area. Okay, we are poisoned. So there's a clear... I don't know what you're doing or why you're doing it, but I don't like it. How do you like fire? I wish I had another fire magic site, then I could make fire up. 
Uh, but I don't have enough pocket space for Fyra and Cure or Cure and Clear. So whatever, we'll just keep smacking this guy. Okay. Can't have the Malboro and this jerk here at the same time. That's bad for business. Like, when there's just the one enemy, we can sit here and tank the hits. But when it's got friends, that's when things get a little nastier. Thankfully, the clear effect remains in its spot for a while, because otherwise we would have just been sucked clean out of its effect. Oh. Let's try a focus attack thing. Uh, it does about as much damage as a three-hit combo. Oh, we are poisoned and low on health. That is bad. That's fine, you can suck up more mushrooms. I don't care. There we go. So, a little bit of fun trivia. In the original game, you know, I discussed last time how when you beat a stage, it adds four additional artifacts to the ones that you picked up in the stage. And uh, those four are pulled from a table that is decided for you based on how many points your team got from the extra objectives. So the threshold for each table changes depending on the number of players playing. So like just Pulling numbers out of my head, not actual for reals numbers, but just an example. Say, if you're playing solo, 100 points would get you the best table, but in two-player it would be 200, in three-player it would be 300, four-player it would be 400, or something to that effect. Those numbers aren't exact, I'm not pulling them from anything, those are just made-up numbers, but that's how it works. The issue, in the GameCube release at least, I don't know if it's still the same, but in the GameCube release, if you had ever, at any point, played with more than just solo, the thresholds were permanently increased. Instead of being... Hail Moogle at your service, Capo. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, permanently increased instead of just for Hail while Moogle, you're Capo. playing with that number of players. So, play four-player ever, and then go back to playing single a week later you still have the four-player thresholds. This made it impossible to get two of the artifacts by playing solo if you had ever played in four-player. Every other artifact in the game you could get solo even with the four-player thresholds, but two of them could never be gotten solo from that point onward. So, how does it feel to be out on the road? We miss you very much. Is there anything you need out there? Don't hesitate to ask for anything you need, all right? Sure. Oh, I need more love. And the reason I'm saying that is because uh, you want your family to like you and be happy with you. Because the happier your family is, the better the stuff they can make for you later. Or give you later. And then we'll send an item because, again, we want our family to like us and be proud of us and all that. And we're going to give them a fruit seed. There you go. No, we're good. I've got your reply, Capo. So long, Capo. Bye. That's not a very good number. That's fine. We don't need a good number. 
Oh, we got two Earth Pendants. Well, now we get to choose which one we want. I'll take the Earth Pendant. So yeah, sometimes you can get multiples of the same artifact. That's actually pretty nice if you're playing in multi, because that means more than one person can take it. And actually, I said not to look at the diary when we got out, but we're going to look at the diary now that we're out. As I approach the mushroom forest... So wait, is it the mushroom forest or the fungi forest? I feel like I've been fed two different names. I somehow feel like I'm shrinking. Each toadstool I pass seems taller than the last. Now I know I'm inside the forest. I'm walking along a rooftop of mushrooms. Although a Malboro blocked my path, I prevailed and collected a drop of myrrh. Alright. Uh, the Black Knight. I saw the caravan from Alphateria today. The town was already abuzz with the talk of the Black Knight, but Sol had more tales to tell. Sol spoke with such enthusiasm that he actually seemed to admire him. It is astonishing how quickly word of the Black Knight has spread in spite of the way Miasma isolates every town. Yep, that's a thing. Alright, so let's go to this town here. Uh, it's our first real one, Mars Pass. Uh, it's got nice music. That's not really saying much in this game. But this is our first real chance to actually get some gear upgrades. So yeah, as you can see, they've got themselves a nice crystal. And they've got a blacksmith. Okay, so... Ooh, I like plus 5 to our attack when our current attack is 15. Yeah, I'll take a 33% damage increase. Absolutely. And you know what? I'll take a 30% defense increase as well. Or not. Why not? Is it that I... Do I have one bronze? Is that what it is? I thought I had more than one bronze. Or wait, it's just cannot craft here. We need to find, like, an armor. There are different people. Um, down here? Hey. Oh, you're just a shop. Yeah, I've definitely got enough bronze. Oh. Could buy this. Iron armor would be better than bronze armor. How much does Mythical cost? Ooh, no thanks. Also, I can't afford the iron, so yeah, no reason to buy the iron armor recipe. Alright, sorry. Don't have anything I want to buy from you. Isn't there, like, some secret in somewhere in this town? Alright, get some of that bronze armor going. There we go. So yeah, Clavots wear armor. Yukes wear salads. Selkies wear belts. And Lilties wear helmets. I don't know why they're split up like that, but they are. Uh, down here. There it is. This is the Moogle Den here. There's one of these in every location you can visit in the entire game, and you get stamps by visiting them, and... I forget what it is other than a completion thing. Hello, folks. What's a mog stamp?
What's a memory crystal? Oh, that's new. It'd be nice if the control info didn't keep on trying to sneak onto the screen. Like, it shows up if you haven't pressed anything in a long enough time. Except apparently that time is short enough that it can take longer for a text box to, con to finish filling up. Oh, hey. Okay. Also, we could give our... Well, yeah, we, we could paint him. Which changes what spells he can cast for us, which, I mean, that's kind of nice. I think he only casts spells if you have him drop the bucket. Which, I mean, that's fine. But whatever, I don't care. Like, you can paint him red to have him cast fire, paint him blue to have him cast... something. You can also give him a trim, which helps in hot areas. But also, uh... It doesn't help in cold areas. Yeah, I don't care right now. What I do care about is taking the correct exit from Mars Pass so that we can go to the next dungeon. on the road. What does this require? Earth. So yeah, I feel like that's gonna be it for this episode. Join us next time when we go to the Mine of Cthurges. See you then, friends. <laughs>